Chapter 1 The Greatest Pirate Story Ever John Chatterton and John Matera were days away from launching a quest they'd been planning for two years, a search for the treasure ship San Bartolome, sunk in the 17th century and worth a hundred million dollars or more. To find it, they'd moved to the Dominican Republic and risked everything they owned and held dear. The discovery would make them rich beyond their dreams and engrave their names in the history books. The New York Times would profile them. Museums would hold black-tie affairs in their honor. Best of all, they knew just where to look. And then their phone rang. On the line was Tracy Bowden, a 69-year-old treasure hunter and a legend in the business. He said he had something big to discuss and asked if the men might fly to Miami to hear him out. Chatterton and Matera didn't have two minutes to spare in advance of their quest for the San Bartolome. They'd vowed never to let anything put them off track. But there was an urgency in Bowden's voice they hadn't heard in the year since they'd met him. And Miami was just a two-hour flight from Santo Domingo. They could be there and back the same day. If nothing else, Bowden told great stories. And in treasure hunting, stories were the next best thing to gold. So, one morning in early 2008, they packed day bags and booked tickets and went on their way. The treasure on board the San Bartolome had been lost for 400 years. It could wait another few hours for them to come find it. In Miami, they rented a car and set out for Bowden's house. He wasn't like any other treasure hunter they'd met. He seemed to work in the shadows, shunning publicity and almost never teaming up with others. He didn't boast or issue bullshit claims, and he used little of the modern technology that had revolutionized underwater salvage, relying instead on old drawings, aging equipment, and his own decades-old notes to find wrecked ships loaded with silver and gold. During his career, Bowden had discovered not one, but two Spanish treasure galleons, and he'd done groundbreaking work on a third. Yet neither Chatterton nor Matera could judge how wealthy he'd become. His home in the Dominican Republic was hardly larger than a garage, and his salvage boat, the Dolphin, was good, but not grand. As a successful treasure hunter, Bowden should have been able to live in a palace, a place with solid gold doorknobs and a moat. But as Chatterton and Matera pulled into the driveway, they had to double-check the address. The house, while lovely, looked no different than any other in this ordinary suburban subdivision. Inside, Bowden offered them coffee, but they hardly heard him. Everywhere they looked, they saw treasure. In one room were silver coins embedded in coral. In another, centuries-old brass navigational instruments that museums would have paid a fortune to own. The china in Bowden's dining room was 17th-century Delftware, still as blue and white as the day it was made, and a match for a priceless set Matera had seen in the Metropolitan Museum of Art in New York. Bowden showed them other coins and artifacts, each with a story, each from a shipwreck he'd worked. He let them handle everything. Touch was important, he said. Otherwise, a person could never really know this stuff. Finally, Matera excused himself to use the bathroom. He stopped when he walked in the door. Piled high in the bathtub were plastic bags filled with silver pieces of eight, all from the 17th century. He lifted one of the bags from the tub and inspected the contents through the flimsy plastic. For years, he'd seen silver coins like these sell for a thousand dollars a piece at auction. By his count, there were at least one hundred bags in the tub and fifty coins to a bag. Matera had never been quick at math, but he made this calculation right away. In a single bathtub, he was looking at five million dollars in treasure, all bundled in the cheapest baggies he'd ever seen, not even with Ziploc tops. Returning to the living room, Matera quick-stepped over to Chatterton and whispered in his ear, Take a leak. Huh? Just do it. Go to the bathroom. Chatterton shrugged. They were partners. So he went. He returned a few minutes later, eyes bulging. Bowden asked the men to join him at the dining room table, then got down to business. 